Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Kara, and I'm joined by Leah, Katie, and Bonnie talking about our one cool medical thing. Bonnie and Katie have already talked about menstrual cups and Lillian Ward. (laughs) But before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. So my question for you is, what is the most frightening medical issue you've had or been around? Ooh, or been around. Mm-hmm. Dun, so dun, it didn't dun. necessarily have to happen to you. Ah, <laughs> ah. But it was somebody terrifying that you, that you observed. Got yeah. <laughs> well, mine's pretty yes, right Katie. away, I know. <laughs> Do it. Because, you know, I, I did something a little dramatic when I was younger. <gasps> Do I yeah, finally get to know that. the story? Oh, you know it. I barely know the story. <laughs> no, tell the story. Tell the story. <laughs> um. So when I was the summer after my fourth grade year in school, I actually bruised my spinal cord. Mm. And so I went to bed one night and then I woke up at 4 a.m. Like that night, my legs felt a little tingly, but I woke up at 4 a.m. and I tried to get out of bed and I fell down to the ground because your legs legs were not working. Yeah. So I yelled for my parents and I think they still feel a little guilty because they did what parents naturally do. Oh, go back to bed. And oh. I'm like, no, like I legitimately my legs don't work, guys. <laughs> right, right. So you're you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get up here because we got a problem. <laughs> it's a real problem, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. So I ended up going to a bigger city because our I grew up in a small town. So I went to Louisville, Kentucky. Ah. Um. Many many tests because they really weren't sure why this was happening to me. Um. But the best guess they finally came up with was that I had been jumping on a friend's trampoline. And I never fell off or did anything dangerous. In fact, the mom was like adamant we had to follow all the rules, jump Mm -hmm. one at a time. But just children are flexible. And so your spinal cord's flexible. So um, they believe what happened, yeah, Yeah. is that my spinal cord hit my vertebrae and that bruising and then swelling, of course, you're like from my lower back down, they weren't like talking to my brain, figuring out what to do with my legs and, you know. Gotcha. All of that business. So I always thought I knew it had involved yeah. a trampoline and a bruised spine. I just assume you fell off, and I'm like, <laughs> nobody bring up trampolines around Katie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Wow. So yeah, and it How- didn't settle in until the next morning. And then um, I spent about a month in the hospital because, well, first of all, we were talking about advocating for your health. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, of course, um, a catheter because you know you don't have bladder or poopy control when, when your legs yeah. are <laughs> you're not feeling and stuff below the belt correct um and i ended up getting a bladder infection from the catheter which Uh then they ordered medicine but the medicine didn't come or got screwed up so then it became a kidney infection and then it still wasn't there so it became blood poisoning oh Oh, and i was so sick yeah they finally got me my meds and i was like miserably sick so that delayed it and then i had to actually go to their rehab center and work with a physical therapist and an occupational therapist and Wow. Um, everybody out there in the radio world, I do walk. Yes, yes, yeah, I do walk. You guys you have seen it. No, that her right. legs stop working. Right, so oh I still have like a little bit of an echo reflex in my right leg, but I'm gotcha. pretty good. Just had to start fifth grade with a butt pillow and a walker. <laughs> wow, <laughs> sexy you. life. Wow, Ooh, you got yeah. all the boys to come to the yard. Then. I did. <laughs> so there's my dramatic medical story. Wow. So how long did wow. it take you though to st- be able to walk again? Um, well, I was without feeling for, I believe, about a week. But then directly after that was when I was so sick. So oh, once I got, yeah, anyway. so once I got well, they started putting me vertical again. Um, funny side note, because I'm one that shares these kind of things. The <laughs> first time they prop me up, they yeah. used the bed to just prop me vertical because I've been like laying down mm-hmm. flat yeah. for right. <laughs> two weeks now. Gravity took some poop from my butt. Oh, <laughs> totally, oh. totally pooped down my yeah, leg. My first time vertical. Escape, yeah. Okay. Enjoying the effects Gra- of gravity once gravity again works. in that vertical <laughs> kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, oh. and then it was probably about 
two weeks of just slow steps of taking it. And even when I left, like I was walking, but still needed the support of a walker. So I would say it was about a month and I was doing pretty good and pretty mobile. And then about a month or two later and I didn't need the walker anymore and was doing pretty good. So, but I had to go to like outpatient physical therapy after I left the hospital and all of that. So it took a little bit of work, which I was like, ugh, this sucks. Plus guys, this couldn't have happened during the school year. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. It was my whole summer break. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that's still pissed about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, miss some fucking school. <laughs> no, mm. anyway. you could have missed months of school. All right? Yeah, no, you missed months of summer. But I will <laughs> say, I got lots of cards, and when I came back, there was a firework display in my honor. Oh, so, you know, getting paralyzed, you'll get some attention, guys. Look, at I'm not going to recommend it. It's not like I'm prescribing. <laughs> Let it. me write down a <laughs> note to self. <laughs> also, it's something about growing up in a small town, right? right. So everybody know. knows. Yeah, <laughs> and they like fireworks. <laughs> the best way to welcome somebody back <laughs> it is <laughs> this is true because america i'm staring at bonnie now. i was gonna say who's next <laughs> guys I, ain't got, I haven't had it happen to me i am terrified of shingles oh really I'm i've terrified. had them <laughs> yeah i have known like i want that shot now <laughs> i have known several people in their 30s yeah to have shing- i had chicken pox as a kid right when I was yep. five. right yeah me too i am terrified of shingles <laughs> it sounds <laughs> pretty shitty now. and apparently it's it like really hard for even because they don't want to give you a shot till you're like 60 or 65 something really? like that. oh okay and even then i guess it's like really hard to like get it just everyone's always out of it oh okay they don't make so that many much people of it. that want it Right. I want that now. <laughs> well, see, you have an awareness of it because my shingles weren't that bad, but I think it's because I caught them so fast and got medication for them so mm. fast. They didn't have, they weren't lengthy. So well, knowing about I it. recognized them right away because I know somebody <laughs> whose son, they didn't recognize them because he was oh. so young. Right, yeah. right. So it was well, months. I felt like a weirdo. Oh, Actually, no. I'm really thankful. I don't know that if I had gone to my doctor that they would have known. Because mm-hmm. I, what was really strange. Sorry, guys. I just have all kinds yeah. of medical Do drama, it. apparently. It. It's, it's medicine. <laughs> but <month>. I felt like, <laughs> I felt like a weird um, tingling on the inside of my arm. Hmm. And I didn't really know what it was. I was just like, oh, it wasn't that bothersome. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up um, like a day later and had what looked like bug bites on my back or like a oh, rash. Yeah. And I sent a picture to my friends and they're like, uh, do you have bed bugs? And I was like, shut the fuck up. I, know, I right? don't have bed bugs. <laughs> like, no, I never have. I never will. <laughs> but it was bothering me. So my dad is a dentist and my uncle is a retired oncologist. So they're both doctors. And I sent it out to both of them. And um People, when they are going through treatment for cancer, are very vulnerable to things like shingles. So right. my uh, uncle that was the oncologist was really familiar. And he was like, no, that's shingles. And mm, so I was able to get nice. it taken care of right away. Oh, so awesome. I think I still have it, Bonnie. You want my picture of shingles? Well, Just so you I'm can be on the up and up. Check my back every day when I wake up. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't look at my back it's all that check. often. <laughs> like I know what happens around your torso area. It can, yeah. It was like oh, my shoulder because it runs through a nerve. Right. Oh. Right across. It came across <laughs> to my boobs. I have a cousin who I think it hits her ear. Oh, 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 okay, I have an ear thing. <laughs> oh, I have that. Sorry. Because <laughs> oh. it's one of the things that really just... I know. Mm. Oh, wow. I didn't know people were afraid of shingles. <gasps> Terrified. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, it's, it's a weird one. It is a, yeah. a weird one. Wait, uh. is, is chicken pox the one of the things that they vaccinate for now? Yeah, they do now. Yeah. They yeah, started kids, doing it yeah. like a couple years after me. Okay. I was in the era of the chicken pot parties. Right. Uh, okay. I was too. Yeah. Yeah. I had a bunk with my brother. <laughs> didn't happen to me. I don't even know how I, because I was five. Right. And I remember running around the house naked. Yeah. And I remember being very confused to why I couldn't run around the backyard naked. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, but I'm itchy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's pants off, dance off yeah. time. What are we doing here? <laughs> Yeah, I got chicken pox and they're just like, so your brother's going to stay in the room with you now. And I'm like, what? My mom didn't want to go through this separately mm, two times. So right. it was you both get it at the same time. Right. And do, but yeah, my my girls got the shot and have never had chicken pox. So mm. y- yay. I mean, I'm like, I feel like I know what to do, though, because like I've been through it. So it's like, I got yeah. you. So if everyone <laughs> Well, they gets... can't get shingles then if they never had yeah. chicken pox. Correct. So that's, 
There's that. Huge. Medicine. But it's right. probably only if they've had the vaccine. Because if you haven't had the vaccine, you can still get it. Yeah. Gotcha. Even as an adult. And it's like yeah. way worse when you're an adult. Yeah. Right. Chicken adult you get chicken, pox. Yeah. chicken pox as an adult, I bet you yeah. can still get shingles. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Well, and if you have shingles you and you're around virus. somebody that hasn't had chicken pox and hasn't had the vaccination, you can yeah. give them chicken pox. Right. Ah! I remember I was freaking <laughs> some people out. <laughs> Exactly. So if they are anti-vaxxers, then uh-huh. yeah. mm. then you bring them, Katie. Yep. <laughs> With shingles. Wow. Uh, oh god. Okay. So I was. Yeah. I have so many fun ones, uh, but I've talked about my fibroids quite mm-hmm. a bit. Um. Uh. My glorious diabetes is not really that fun. I'll just be bitching about a keto diet for a while. Um. So I'll talk about the time that my uh my husband almost died and I saved his life. Okay. So he just got back from the Iraq war, (laughs) like two days had just got back from the Iraq war. And we decided to go on vacation to Chattanooga, Tennessee. So, uh, little Cammy was teeny tiny. Um, she had like a little pack and play, but she was not tired because she had slept in the car, the car, Mm -hmm. the entire way on the trip. So we laid her down in the bed and we decided to do the adult crib, which is one parent on one side, the other parent on the other side and the baby in the middle (laughs) Mm -hmm. and like go to sleep, go to sleep. We're both like, okay, we're just going to lay here until she falls asleep. Well, we all dozed off and I wake up to a thud crunch. Josh had fallen off the bed and hit his head (gasps) on the nightstand on the way down. Uh, He was completely unconscious he was foaming at the mouth and drooling everywhere. And then he started seizing. Oh, no. So I did the only thing I could do, which was to stop the bleeding and call 911. So I grabbed Cammy's little rattle toy and held it to his head to stop the bleeding, uh, called 911. And as the ambulance like arrived at the hotel, because we were in a hotel, as they arrived, they opened the door. Suddenly he woke up. Like, Mm. nothing had happened. Like, good morning. But he didn't know who I was. I have never had a person stare at me like they don't know me like that. And it's my husband. They're like, you got to know who this lovely lady is. And he's like, I don't know who she is. He didn't know where he was, which is understandable. We were on vacation in a hotel. He didn't know who Cammie was. (laughs) He didn't know nothing, oh he, but he was awake. Yeah. <laughs> so they took him in a beautiful ambulance that I followed behind. And so, yeah, he had like nine stitches in his head and uh, had a concussion. Oh, and then we went to the aquarium the next day. <laughs> Did he remember you? Wow. I was going to say. He eventually remembered me. <laughs> okay. Yes. So like he went back and they were doing all these tests in the meantime, the whole time I'm like going. So he's not going to remember me. How do I explain who I am? <laughs> but they're just like, no, he's asking for you now. He's asking how the baby is. And I'm like, okay, so he knows he has a kid because that's going to be an awkward conversation. <laughs> 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 so, yes, eventually everything came uh-huh. back. But he basically he remembers he wasn't going to go to sleep. He was just kind of resting for a little bit. And then he remembers waking up in the ambulance. Mm. He doesn't even remember waking up in the room. Like that whole part is still wow. like, bam. still, still scar tissue in the back of his head too. But I saved his motherfucking life yeah, you did. <laughs> and got him on his side. So is the foam. So he wouldn't choke mm-hmm. on his own. Oh my God. That was horrible. There you go. That is so scary. Wow. Chattanooga stores. Yes. Life saver. Mm-hmm. So I win every argument. You know why? <laughs> <laughs> Because if it ever gets too bad, I just pull that. But I saved your motherfucking <laughs> life card. I won. Not just because you're female. Well, I'll do that one on occasion. But okay. when I really when need when to, really mm, need it. It's, it's the life, life. It's the life saving card. Yeah. <laughs> what is yours, darling? Well, you know, I was going to say the time I ended up having a transfusion. Yes. Right. Um. In. A different state and city. Right. I'd love to hear that story unless um, you've got another one. You're well, like, wait. You know what you <laughs> said then reminded me that really what was more frightening was when it wasn't something dealing with me. Right. It was me being the observer. Yeah. And that's when my partner Carl had appendicitis, but we didn't know it. Oh, mm. no. And um, I came home from I think I'd been out working that day. And I was going to pick up lunch for Carl and the boys. Yeah. And he's like, 
I am in so much pain. Right. And I'm like, okay. What did you do? I got, <laughs> yeah, I went and got yeah. the, the stuff that I had ordered for lunch for the boys. Mm-hmm. And Carl's like, I don't want to eat. You need to take me. You know, he, he'd said, I just want to wait and see how this plays out. Right, right. And then he's like, you have to take me someplace. <laughs> I and, think it's the coroner. Yeah, <laughs> right. And when you have somebody in the car screaming in pain. Oh, wow. You get really tense when you're driving. <laughs> and you don't think things through straight. Right. Happens. Like going to a hospital that doesn't have an emergency room. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Oops. Uh, so, yeah, that would be the. And then ending up at someplace that did and we found out that he had appendicitis oh wow i like pulled in like into their emergency bay park just stopped the car and he's like you got you got to park and i'm like no (laughs) you're going inside and then we're inside and he's like waiting i'm like no not until you're in they're seeing you and then i'll go move the car yeah yeah so that would be probably more frightening than the time that i ended up having to have a transfusion when I was by myself in San Antonio. Right. Mm. Yes, for anemia. Oof. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, I mean, were you kind of out of it at the time when it was happening to you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> kind of woozy. Me. You know, because when it's happening to you, sometimes you're like, what's you going don't on? See <laughs> the I don't, of it. Yeah, I thought I was having appendicitis is what oh, happened when irony. I was in San Antonio. <laughs> right. And asked directions to the nearest hospital and... Mm-hmm. The hotel couldn't tell me. <laughs> what? The hotel should have this like written down, right? right? Or ready uh, to hand they out, there. or it, on speed right. dial. Yeah. And I ended up going to like a med emergency place Doc in their in a box. Like, yeah. Yeah. We don't take out of state, you know, your insurance. I'm, oh, okay, goodness. tell me where to go. Right. Exactly. I'm dying here. Ended up in the emergency room, and they're like, "You don't have appendicitis, but." Right. We're not going to let you leave because your iron is way too low. Right, exactly. I'm like, what? Your kidneys could shut huh? down. You're, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what are you talking about? But this hurts. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. exactly. And actually found out it was a burst cyst mm. on my ovary. Oh, no. Um, from the flight. Huh. Whoa. So I just, Flying does it? I Great. found Shit. out. Bonnie, I can't fly. <laughs> no, but fly. this is an ovarian cyst, not the, not right. the fibroid. Not the fibroid. No, those suckers are mean. Yeah. <laughs> and um, But I my iron was low because of the fibroids. Oh, okay. But the pain was mm. the cyst. an ovarian cyst. Oh, wow. So then, yeah, I had to contact the client I was supposed to be training the next day and say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it. I'm in the hospital getting a blood transfusion Mm -hmm. and nothing like meeting the client. Then when they come to the hospital (laughs) to see you. Oh no, 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 that's no. Exactly. Yeah. What is the makeup protocol for that? (laughs) (laughs) There is. Good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, talking, going, I want somebody here, but nobody Right. And get there. and yeah. Exactly. The nice thing was the hotel um, had put my stuff, basically didn't charge me for the room for that night. Very nice. And then when I did get home from the, back to the hotel from the hospital, they checked in on me like every two hours oh. to make sure I was okay. Aww. That is Made nice. me nice. food, which was off. Aw. Off the bill? Off. I don't remember about the bill. Okay, cut but <laughs> it was off hours. Right. They made sure I had something yeah. to eat. Oh, that's good. That was really nice. But Aww. I say, do not ever get sick, right? While you're on the road, yeah, for work, and nobody's with you. Yeah, it's terrible. That's got to be the sure. worst. Yeah, exactly. That'd make me so sad to be all by myself through that. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Be like, I don't care what it takes. Somebody get here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're getting here when I'm about to leave. Just get here. Yeah. <laughs> the idea uh, of having somebody on the way. <laughs> yeah. And then going back to the client oh, you know, yeah. two months later. And uh, say, I know I was supposed to do training two months right. ago. But <laughs> as in the I've got all my blood now. I'm yeah. ready for this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's fair and totally understandable. <laughs> I'm glad you are okay. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Sounds scary and shitty. <laughs> a very long time ago. Because gotcha. that was before I found out about the fibroids. I oh, had yeah. no idea. Uh-huh. Just had those hellacious periods. Nobody tells you anything about the fibroids. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's great. 
Yeah. <laughs> and being a trainer, do having um, those kind of periods that would go mm. through. Right, right. It's like. Okay, two tampons, two pads. Yes. I'm sure I can make it. And then realizing as you're standing up there training, crap. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, Did not plan accordingly. Stop. Exactly. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> but there is no stop. It's like, oh, nope. cool. This is my life now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, <laughs> what but... is your one cool thing? Today, I'm actually talking about a lesser known individual. Like Katie did. Dun, 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 dun. But she has a fairly well known practice scale test named after her. Sweet. So, first, I'm going to talk about that test, which is the Apgar test. Yeah. Which is also Sorry, known as the Apgar like, scale. We were like in unison there. My yeah. goodness, we're like the backup dancers to the Apgar test. Okay. Now, <laughs> I, I knew nothing about it oh. before I started doing this research. Nice. And I'm not a knowledgeable about female health. Gotcha. Because, yes, I've had the fibroids. Right. Well, also because we went to school at a time where females don't have a different health. <laughs> right. We apparently don't have a vagina. You yeah. can't say it on television. Yeah. <laughs> the default is male. The yeah. Default is that's male. true. Yes. <laughs> and that's what, you know, I had ovarian cyst and hysterectomy in my 30s. Um, I know heart disease is leading death in cause of death in women. Mm-hmm. And that there's a Go Red for Women Day, which is next uh, February 1st. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, I know that they recommend mammograms between after the age of 40. Right. After the age of 40 until 50, and then one to two years, depending on the person. Right. But I do not ever remember having the Apgar scale, hearing about the Apgar scale. I know it exists. Uh, I know little about it, and I'm very excited to learn more. Okay. <laughs> well, and that was one of my questions, too, during this is, who has heard of it? I have. Yeah. Bonnie and... Yeah. yeah. She's in the uh, 52, what was it? Headstrong, 52 women in... Women science. in science. I have a, a friend at work who works full-time at the hospital in the NICU, did not know anything about the woman she knew the score but she had no idea what was oh. so i went to work i'm like da, 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 da. And she's like okay yeah like, and that's what most people know the test right yeah. not a person behind know it that it was named after virginia apgar lovely so you know and i figure anybody who hasn't had a child might not know mm-hmm. but my two best friends one of them has not had a child and she knew gotcha mm-hmm. And I have had a child. Mm-hmm. Granted, I placed for her for adoption, and maybe that's why they never discussed mm. the Apgar scale with me. Maybe. But um, it is a, the Apgar scale, for anybody who doesn't know, is a five-category test used to evaluate a newborn baby's overall health. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that's what I, I thought it was like a general health thing. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember if it was a specific, you know what I mean, ailment sort of thing. But right, no. Just it's general just, health of the It's baby. just as soon as they're born, yeah. how they're responding, what they look like, that kind of stuff, right? Exactly. Because I don't, I don't remember them talking about Jonah's like stats on that necessarily, but I was like a real birth nerd and just researched everything I could about it. So Yeah, yeah you're like, what's the score? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? I'm real sad I never saw my placenta. Just saying. But anyway, go ahead. I never saw that either. I was curious. You didn't see Katie's placenta? No. (laughs) I I was the bitch that showed up with my two children. And Katie went, this is great. Y'all need to go now. And I'm like, that's fair. That's fair. You guys were lovely. Um, We just wanted to pop in early on the process. Yes. (laughs) Well, so it's normally done at one minute and then at five minutes. Oh, okay. um, After birth. And then if the score is low, it's repeated every five minutes. Right. Um, you're, you give a zero, one, or two for each of the five categories. Scores of seven and above are considered normal. Uh, four to six are considered low. And three and below are generally regarded as critically low. Ah. Um, and then a low score on the one-minute mark may show the baby requires medical attention. Right. Like, uh, like now. <laughs> right, but it doesn't necessarily indicate a long-term problem. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Because particularly if the score improves by the five-minute mark. Gotcha. Yeah, what it stands, and they're using her name mm-hmm. for A is activity, so checking muscle tone. Gotcha. 
P is pulse. Cool. G is grimace. So that's um, reflex to irritability. Mm-hmm. I was going to say uh, his or her <laughs> purpleness. <laughs> sorry, mm-hmm. grimace like McDonald's. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> A is for appearance, <laughs> which is their skin color. There yeah. it is. <laughs> and R is respiration. Uh-huh. So you just score that. It's just real quick, you know. Right. Zero mm-hmm. to three. Do they have it? Is it eh? Right. Or is it looking good? Looking good. Nice. Yeah. So, now that we know that, right? Uh, the person who developed this is Dr. Virginia Apgar, and she was born in 1909 on June 7th. Gotcha. She was the youngest of three children. She was born and raised in Westfield, New Jersey. No, Jersey. <laughs> um, her father was an insurance executive and also an amateur inventor an astronomer oh interesting little mix there <laughs> yeah her um actually though her oldest brother died of tuberculosis oh. and her other brother had a chronic illness so it sounds like she was the only really healthy child which also probably helped why she wanted to be in medicine correct yeah, yeah. because when she graduated from high school in 1925 she knew that she wanted to be a doctor nice um which for the time yeah was a little uncommon. Mm-hmm. Um, she graduated from Mount Holyoke College in 1929, where she had studied zoology with minors in physiology and chemistry. Oh, wow. That's a I'm full like, load. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Like, That's a smart girl. Yeah. <laughs> and in 1933, she graduated fourth in her class from Columbia University of Physicians and Surgeons. Oh. Oh, that Columbia University thing. Yeah, it comes <laughs> back. That's what I was thinking. Oh, nice. And then she completed a resi- residency. Why can I not say that word? Residency. In Words are hard. Yeah. Yeah. They are, especially after some rum. <laughs> um, Always after some rum. Yes. Um, she, and so she finished her residency in 1937. Oh. She was discouraged. No. <laughs> by the chairman of surgery at the Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center from continuing her career as a surgeon. No. Mm. A woman being discouraged for doing yeah. a thing she's good at, trained at, and wants to do. <laughs> but he encouraged her to practice anesthesiology. Oh. Because he felt that advancements in anesthesia were needed to further advance surgery. Oh, now that's different. Mm-hmm. And that yes. she had the right type of personality um, and the energy and ability. The yeah. chemistry background, too. Right. And if she had a really, I always hear about the super steady hand, that it's like there's a surgeon steady hand, but an anesthesiologist, that, that person's by your spinal cord. Yeah. <laughs> that accuracy matters. <laughs> well, she took that... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? That uh, the advice. There's a word. Yes. There we you. go. Yeah. Advice. <laughs> uh, and she did train in anesthesiology oh. for six months at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Gotcha. Love Madison. <laughs> it, that's where the first anesthesia department was in the U.S. Hmm. Irony. I, no I idea. don't think so. <laughs> really? You don't? No, no, no. I'm thinking she was there at the at the place where it mm-hmm. started and yeah. very early on. Yeah. And then, yes, exactly. Yes. And then she did an additional six months of study at Bellevue Hospital in New York. Gotcha. The famous um, Bellevue Hospital. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, ooh. I know, right? Maybe it was fine back then. Yeah. It wasn't fine. <laughs> and she got a certificate as an anesthesiologist in 1937. Cool. And then she went back to the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons Ooh. in 1938. So Ooh. she was the first woman to head a specialty division at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, cool. which is now New York Presbyterian Health. Right. Hospital. Oh, okay. Which I think is the, um, I think that's the one Elizabeth Blackwell started. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think I will double check. Yes. <laughs> And she started their anesthesia division. Oh, nice. And then because of the anesthesia's popularity was growing, Mm -hmm. and it had previously been handled by nurses and Mm -hmm. now is being handled by doctors, they did actually establish it as an official department in 1949. Gotcha. And um, 
Virginia was not made the head of the department. Interesting. At, as expected. Right. And the job was given to a male colleague. No. Hmm. And she was given a faculty position at the school. <laughs> Teacher. Cool. Yes. Yay. Um, she was, however, the first woman to become a full professor at Columbia University. Oh, hmm. very nice. Okay. Um, in 1953, while she was still at Columbia, um, she noticed that while the infant mortality rate had decreased, mm -hmm. the number of infant deaths within the first 24 hours after birth remained constant. Uh -huh. And she began to research how to lower infant death in the first 24 hours of life. Right. Crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, as an obstet obstetric anesthesiologist as even a word i can't say <laughs> she was able to document trends that could distinguish healthy infants from infants in trouble and she introduced uh that test the apgar which has become known as the apgar yeah. to assess the health of newbar newborns nice so by the 1960s then many hospitals in the united states were using the apgar score consistently and as we entered into the 21st century, the score continues to be used mm -hmm. and provided as an acceptant and convenient method for reporting the status of newborn infant immediately after birth. Wow. So if they are at severe risk, like not breathing at all, mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily perform the test right away. They right. go ahead and Priorities. provide. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But in 1959, she left Columbia and went to work for the March of Dimes Foundation. Oh, cute. Where she worked until she died. Oh, gotcha. She served as vice president for medical affairs and later for vice president and director of basic research. She was one of the first at March of Dimes to bring attention to the problem of premature birth. Right. Which is now one of their top priorities. I was going to say, that's mostly what I know them from. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. And during this time, she um, wrote and lectured extensively. And during the rubella pandemic. Oh, yes. Of 1964 to 1965, she became an advocate for universal vaccination to prevent really? mother-to-child transmission of rubella. Right. My babies also have shots of rubella. And I'm like, I don't even know what this disease... Like, I had to look it up because I'm like, where are they getting shot? Like, I know what polio is. But rubella... And I'm like, oh, okay. So now I know what the... Was it mumps, measles, and rubella is all yeah. in one yeah. one shot thing? And I'm like, I want to know what this is. Oh, I that have, sounds like sucky. Get them the vaccination. <laughs> Depending... You can tell mm. what age someone is. Right. By whether you can see their scar. I mean, right. at least age range. Yeah. Exactly. Or smallpox vaccination, too. Oh, that one. Yeah. That yeah, one will leave them. Smallpox one. one. Really wicked mark. <laughs> um, Virginia also promoted the effective use of RH testing. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. they could identify women that were at risk for transmission of maternal antibodies across the placenta. Uh -huh. So that helped also with... The moms. Well, and with babies being born right, with issues right. because of the RH. Gotcha. Um, and this is what I thought was really cool... For at the time, she spoke at the March of Dimes Youth Conference. So two teenagers about teen pregnancy and congenital disorders. And that was a time when those You topics, did not talk about you didn't those. Talk about them. Right. Yeah. You know? So very that nice. was important. Yeah. Forward thinking. Be aware. When you know better, you do better. Right. <laughs> and uh, she published over 60 scientific articles, numerous shorter essays, and a book that she wrote with a f another woman, Is My Baby All Right, hmm. is the name of it. Oh, very cool. Um, now, throughout her career, Virginia maintained that women are liberated from the time they leave the womb. <laughs> oh, hmm. look at that. And that being female had not imposed significant limitations on her medical career. Mm -hmm. Other than some of her privately expressed frustrations with gender equalities, mm -hmm. especially salaries. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> and well, still true today. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm hmm. 
And having a male get the position that she had expected. Right. Yeah. And her getting a teaching position, which is great that they created and she's the first one to get it, but still teachers over yeah. medical doctors. <laughs> um, she never married. Okay. So much like um, Held. Lillian Wald. Wald. Yes. Gotcha. Sorry. Right. That's okay. Um, or had children. Gotcha. Okay. Because at the time, you know. I was curious since a lot of her work focuses on children. Yeah. yeah. And her f- focus was on her work and mm. on yeah. he- working with children and helping children. Yeah. She was surrounded by babies all day. Yeah. <laughs> she had to have her own babies. <laughs> exactly. She had babies she could like give back. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's dream. <laughs> oh, grandparents dream. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> um, she died on August 7th, 1974 at age 65. So she was oh, not very old. Right. Um, also, just on the side, she was a very musical oh, person. Nice. Her whole family had had focus on music. She played the violin, and her brother played the piano and organ. Cool. And during the 1950s, a friend introduced her to instrument making, and she made her own two violins, a viola and a cello. Wow. Cool. She so made her own Obviously instrument. had good hands. Yeah, right? <laughs> An anesthesiologist yes. surgeon's hand. <laughs> I love it. In her, in her 50s, she started taking flying lessons. <gasps> Really? Dating that her goal was to someday fly under New York's George Washington Bridge. Ooh. <laughs> but I did not find anything saying that she did. I don't know Ooh. if you're technically allowed to do that. Right. <laughs> I think it needs to be an emergency type landing. <laughs> <laughs> there are um, quite a few honors and awards that she achieved. Nice. Also, posthumously... She was honored by the U.S. Postal Service with a 20-cent Great American Series postage stamp. Oh, that was in 1994. In 1995, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls. Look at that, yes. In 99, she was designated a Women's History Month honoree by the National Women's History Project. Cool. And on June 7th, 2018... Google celebrated what would have been her 109th birthday oh. with a Google Doodle. Oh, I yeah. love the Google Doodle. And I think, you know, that's yeah. up there with the celebrities that were on the Muppet Show. Right, the there Muppet you go. Show was yes. around. <laughs> you know you've made it when yep. you get a Google Doodle. Exactly. Yes. So no, that, I love it. Um, <laughs> that is my uh, one your one cool medical cool thing. Cool medical thing. Which is That's very amazing. cool. Yeah. You get like a test and then you also get the lady who invented it. Right. And most people <laughs> do know the name of the test, but don't mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. Virginia that it was named after a person. Right. Yeah. I had no idea it was named after a person. Right. So See? I just knew the test. Right. It's exactly. Amazing. I love it. (laughs) That is brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And see, now I feel much more knowledgeable about like what the test is, the lady behind it, the dedication and the crap she had to put up with (laughs) to keep our baby safe. (laughs) Yeah. And it, it just makes me think about how much people can dedicate their lives to. Yeah. To saving others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And making sure others are are safe and healthy yeah exactly there is a part of me that wonders um you know that 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 all in medical job of you know doctors and nc and surgeon it's kind of like you know what i've got to be all in to give it to patients and so the home life is like completely my i believe there's a whole show called gray's anatomy that kind of illustrates this point (laughs) of how home lives are messed up how you know it's kind of like you know very independent thing but i think it's part of it it's like no no no. i want to make sure that i dedicate my mind and energy to others right so that way when i go home it's all me yeah (laughs) and i think that's fair yeah (laughs) and i'm glad there's people like that that are out there (laughs) yeah because i don't think i could do it no Mm -hmm. no (laughs) that that wraps it up for this week join us next week because our next gal pal shares her one cool thing as gal's guide to the galaxy podcast continues thanks for listening For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gals Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.